Hey guys, welcome back to another Q&A. It is December 4th, 2019. Um, this was a contest prep Q&A this week. Well, contest prep slash fat loss. Um, so there's questions pertaining to both. And bear with me. My questions did get a little mixed up. I have some in DMs and I have some on Facebook and some on Instagram. And um, so it's, it's a little mixed up just for... <clears throat> for future reference, if you can keep them in the threads that I send instead of messaging them, it's always easier for me to remember just so I don't forget anything. So let's, uh, let's go into it. <clears throat> All right. How do you determine when fat loss slash prep should start? Is this more of a timeline thing based on having a contest day and wanting a full X amount of weeks? To prep or do you see a point where muscle growth and strength just isn't optimal anymore and it's time for a metabolic reset of sorts well i'm not sure if, if by metabolic reset you mean actually like a more of like an insulin sensitivity reset slash fat loss um sensitizing type of phase if that's the case, yeah, that's not a bad time, honestly. So obviously, if you can start prep in an insulin sensitive state, you know, that's it's always going to be better. You're always pretty much always going to respond better in an insulin sensitive state. But, you know, obviously, you might not be super insulin sensitive all the time if you've really been trying to grow and you've really been pushing food. Um, like, I'll give you an example. I've had a lot of people that have you know, we, we know we want to prep and that's a goal and they've been growing and they want to move up a weight class or improve or, you know, whatever. And we decide, all right, we need to pull back. We need to do a mini cut or, you know, or whatever you want to call it at that point. And we turn it into a prep. Everything's going really well. And we're like, oh, you know, let's go, let's turn this into a prep. You know, we know you've, um, we know you've improved. We know that, uh, you're going to be a lot better. And also, we know that from that really, really lean state, as long as we keep things in check post-show and do it properly, we can probably have a pretty good rebound and kind of capitalize on that. So that's the time that we might do it. Now, if the person is aiming more towards certain shows, like they're they're a pro or they're doing national shows, like obviously that changes the landscape a little bit. Um, but as for someone that's not in that situation, you know, they have a little more leeway. Uh, also, <clears throat> how do you determine when to start prep? Like if, if you already know that, um, that you're going to prep then, and you have, maybe you don't have a show in mind necessarily, uh, but you want to know like, when do I, how do I know when my body's ready to prep? Well, you know, it's not always going to be the same, but I mean, your body is, your body is going to have, there's certain things are going to be going on. You're going to have certain, um, tendencies to lose fat better. You, you know, I don't want someone starting prep if they're metabolically downregulated, right? Obviously. Um, I don't want someone starting prep if they've, if they have, uh, other health issues going on. Okay. I don't want someone starting prep if they know that in, a month out that they have a vacation booked, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that. So if their body's functioning well and everything's responsive, there's no health issues. There's nothing that's really going to nothing huge. That's going to get in our way. Then, you know, you're good. You're ready to go. Um, it's never going to be perfect. You're never going to have the perfect scenario. Nobody lives in a bubble. You can't just, that's just not how it works. You still got to go to work and you still got to do, you know, pay bills and do all that stuff. So, you know, um, so nothing's really going to change. But with that being said, there are definitely times where I don't want people starting prep. So if I don't think that their food intake is high enough now, don't get me wrong, like the, the idea of just building up the metabolic ceiling, well, there is a ceiling. You're not going to be able to go above that ceiling. You can't really build a metabolism necessarily, but um, you, can, you can definitely maximize that person's metabolic abilities and that you definitely want to do that before prep, right? 
Um, you definitely want to make sure that all of their health markers are in line. You want to make sure that their psychological health is in line. You want to make sure that all of these things are in line before you start. But I also, with preps, honestly, I, for a national level competitor or pro level competitor, it's going to be a little different. Like I said, you do have a little bit different time frames. These people are probably a little bit more experienced. It's, we've got to kind of work with what you know when the shows are right um and and that's that so with a non with a person that's not in that situation then i try try to make them as flexible as possible with prep um and if you don't pick a show you don't even need to know how many weeks that you need for prep it doesn't matter you just just start losing body fat and when you get to a point that's maybe eight weeks out, give or take, then start looking at shows, pick a general time frame, maybe a few shows within a month time frame that are within your comfortable travel distance, whether if you're just driving or if you don't mind traveling further, just, you know, really just depends. Um, and then map it out that way. And that way, once you get close to the show, you can make sure your travel accommodations are taken care of. You can enter the show and send your, you know, entry, yada, 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 and you're good to go. Um, that's probably going to produce the best look in most people. And even people that are, even people that are national level competitors, if they need to do a qualifying show, well, we can do that, right? We can just kind of just go until they're ready and then hit the qualifier and then hit the national show afterwards. I mean, it's not, it's, I, I, I really think, with prep, the more that you can work with your body, the more that you can work with um, the ups and downs that your body gives you, the environmental stressors that may come in and out, the metabolic, you know, the metabolic adaptions that that come, you know, the better you're going to look. Um, and it's less stress if you don't really have to say like, oh, shit, I'm four weeks out and I'm a little behind and I have to do this show. Well, just do a different show, you know, um, it's an expensive sport. You put a lot into a prep, so just don't get on stage until, you know, in, until you're absolutely ready. I know I babbled about all kinds of stuff. I hope that answers a question. I don't know if it does, hopefully. Okay. So next one, making weight versus looking one's best. How do you make the, that determination? Is there a certain point where the scale can be misguiding during prep? So, yeah, I, I would say weigh your pros and cons, right? So what kind of show is it? What's the caliper of competition in the show typically? And then you don't always know, right? Obviously you can't, you're not going to know this, but if you're thinking, okay, it's a, the person asking this is a national level competitor, right? So they, it's a high level of competition and you know that it could make a substantial difference between one weight class to another, especially if there's, especially if you're coming in at the bottom of a weight class, there could be a, a pretty substantial difference in muscle size between one or the other. If there's, you know, 20 pounds difference in the weight classes. So yeah, it's something to consider. Like it, you got to think, is it worth me maybe only looking 90% in a lower weight class, maybe being a little bit bigger or going up, looking full and dry to hundred percent of my ability, not having to manipulate anything and coming in perfectly, but being smaller, um, than, you know, than on some of the other guys, you have to, you have to kind of make that decision for yourself. <laughs> However, you know, um, I would, in most cases, like it's, it's always nice to err on the side of just looking your best. It'll probably yield the best result for most people. Like I said, if it is a national show and you're pretty close, then probably ought to come down if, if it, if you're very close to the next weight. Um, but outside of that type of scenario, I don't really think it's worth it. And you talk about the scale being misguiding, you know, Compare photos, like when you're going through prep, maybe looking at your, um, uh, actually looking at your progress photos, compare them, 
you know, see how you look at different weights. Now, granted, you have to keep in mind that you have to understand what your body looks like from flat to full and so on and so forth. Some people, it's not drastically different. Like you hear some people look terrible flat. Well, some people don't look too bad flat. Like they look, might even look a little bit better. So, you know, you have to, I like to keep that in mind. Obviously, if you're comparing photos, because you could look terrible five pounds lighter just because you're so depleted. But, you know, you have to, you have to have some, like some idea of comparison. Do I look better at 190 pounds or do I look better at 185 pounds? Um, and then also think about too, what are the weigh-in times? What are the parameters there? What kind of time do you have? Um, realistically, a body's only going to digest so much food so quickly. So trying to cram food in and weigh and, you know, weigh in the night before and load overnight. Yeah, you can, that, you know, if, if you have a Saturday show and you, you weigh in Friday night and you load all night long, yeah, you, it, you, it can work. It can definitely work. But here's the thing. Are you going to look better not sleeping all night long and being super stressed out and, and, and wigging out about, you know, trying to make sure that you're loading and looking at yourself overnight and, and all this stuff. So, you know, I think, in most cases outside of maybe that one scenario that I mentioned, the less stress you can have, the more, the more naturally you can let your body peek into the show or gradually you can peek yourself into the show, it's probably going to be better. Some of the best looks are people that are just really lean and don't manipulate a lot. They just eat a little bit more <laughs> leading into the show. Nothing super crazy. Um, you're always rolling the dice when you suck down really hard and it can definitely work. And there's definitely, you know, different chems and stuff that can definitely make that, um, a little bit more doable, but, but again, even then it's always a dice roll. Uh, so like I said, I would weigh kind of weigh the pros and cons as best you can. <clears throat> All right. Next one over Somebody asked about using Yohimbine HCL. So, yeah, so pretty common fat loss supplement, right? They ask if they cannot do fasted cardio, can they still utilize this? <clears throat> All right, so Yohimbine works best in a fasted state. And when you hear the word fasted, basically that means not in the presence of insulin. So insulin's at a baseline state. Um, it's very low because you haven't eaten, it's not needed. It doesn't have to be released to partition nutrients or anything because you don't have anything to partition, um, or very, very little to partition. So that's why getting up in the morning and using it first thing fasted is the easiest way to do it. Right now you can recreate that at different times of the day. If you went and, you know, for example, if you were to test your blood glucose and it takes you about two and a half hours, give or take, to baseline, your insulin levels are going to be somewhere around that same time frame as well to baseline, right? Because your insulin's released to to partition the nutrients and you know so on and so forth. Maybe maybe a little bit longer. You have to realize too that like glucose. Um, Glucose is only one macronutrient. Insulin, like protein, for example, could digest a little bit slower and still has, there could still be some insulin release from that. Let's say it's three hours or what, you know, maybe even more, a little bit more, but you could technically replicate that. You know, if you, if you did eight, two hours before your training and then you trained and then you, you took some Yohimbine at the very end of your training session and then did cardio. You know, people way back, or I, I mean, some people still do it. They do the the post workout cardio, right, to kind of replicate the fasted cardio before people realize that fasted cardio wasn't really necessary in most cases, except for something like this, maybe. Um, well, this is a way that yeah, you could kind of replicate that, right? But you know, I I do get asked sometimes, can you do it pre workout if you haven't eaten for a while? Yeah, you could, but 
it's typically going to burn fat best in like a non glucose intensive type of exercise. So lower intensity, uh, weight training is not really, it, it is more so glucose intensive. It's not really a long drawn out aerobic type of, um, of exercise. So I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really suggest doing it then. All right. Next question is maybe not so much related, but people eat fast acting carbs with added fats pre-workout. For example, cream of rice with peanut butter to slow digestion. Why not just eat a slower digesting carb and save the calories? Thanks. Good point. It's a great point, actually. Um, <clears throat> so if you really, <clears throat> excuse me, if you really wanted to split hairs, and I would probably have to, you'd probably actually have to test this in a lab or like test your blood glucose and, and actually see how long it takes the baseline. But um, adding a fat, if fat's going to be slower digesting than slow digesting carbs anyhow. So adding the fat to the quicker digesting carb is probably still going to be a little bit slower than eating solely a slow digesting carb. hope that makes sense. Um, however, there's also some other things to consider. Maybe just a, a palatability thing, just tastes better. I think cream of rice and peanut butter is probably going to taste better than eating brown rice any day, usually. Um, could also just be part of the diet. Maybe the person has carbs and fats that they need to fill in macronutrient wise, and that's how it works out in their diet. So you'd also consider that. Is there anything magic to it? No, not necessarily. I think you could probably, you could probably replicate it somewhat closely with a slower digesting carb, maybe something that has a little bit of fiber. And as long as you're not like causing a bunch of gastrointestinal distress before you train. <clears throat> I think you could probably replicate that for the most part if you wanted a slower digesting food. Um, and, and, you know, there could be some reasons for that. You know, you wanted, you wanted, uh, your, you don't want your blood sugar to come up and then, and then, you know, dive on you. Um, you know, you could, you could probably replicate it, but some people don't like also, some people might be trying to eat more calories. So, you know, you got to consider that as well. But yeah, if you wanted to save calories, for sure. I don't see anything wrong with that. I'm sure you could do it. Just personal preference. I don't see anything magic about eating a fast digesting carb with a fat in there, to be honest. Um, more of a digestive digestive preference. And I also think, I also think you can manipulate this too by timing of your pre-workout meal around training. Like me personally, I don't like to eat within, <sighs> shoot, I don't like two hours at least, sometimes more than that. Usually more like it, you're almost back to a fast state at that point. And that's just how I feel best. I have a large intro workout shake anyhow, so it doesn't really matter, but I just feel best with pretty much an empty stomach going into the, you know, going into the gym. So a lot of, there's a lot of variables to consider here as to how you would structure that pre-workout meal and, and actually when you would eat it as well. So, <clears throat> I think I have one more. Oh, posing, posing question. That's cool. I don't know if I've, I don't know if I've ever had a posing question. Maybe I have. <clears throat> so they ask how far out to start practice posing. All right. Well, you can, I mean, obviously you can practice posing anytime, but I do think something to consider is your posing can kind of evolve and sharpen up and, and, uh, you can critique things better as you are leaner simply because you're going to be able to see more. You're going to be able to see more details. Um, you know, it's, it's, if you're 20% body fat and <laughs> you're trying to hit a side chest, it's, it's not going to see a lot. You know what I mean? It's just not really going to help you a whole lot. That's not to say that you can't start. And then also from like an endurance standpoint, if you just get really out of breath on stage, then you might want to practice. You might want to start your practice earlier. But typically, you know, like I, 
I don't start harping on posing a little bit more till we get a little closer and we can actually see some separation and detail within the person's physique. Um, and then we can, we can critique it more. And like I said, the leaner that you get, the easier it is to be able to see, uh, to be able to see how everything looks. And I'll also say this, that if your prep's really brutal and you're really freaking tired, don't wait to the last minute to practice posing either because you're just, you're not going to want to spend tons of time practicing on it if you need help doing it. And if you don't know how to pose that well and you know, you, you need the practice. Like I've been, I'm shocked every time I go to shows, seeing people that have competed two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, like for a long time, that still their posing is not that good. You know what I mean? So um, make sure you get the right help, whether it's through your coach or whether you hire a posing coach or whatever it is. Um, and if you've already competed, think back to your last show. Think about the situation. Think about how you presented yourself on stage. Think about maybe issues that you had. Maybe they ran really quick and you weren't prepared. Um, or they they held you out on stage for a long time and you weren't prepared for that either. So whatever it might be. But in general, like I said, outside of someone that's maybe brand, brand new, I'd probably start probably really start harping on them around maybe 10 or 12 weeks out but it's like I'm getting progress I'm getting progress photos that are posing photos anyhow so I'm like that never really changes even in the off season so you know there's all they're always there but we get a little more nitpicky with it as we, as uh, things get a little leaner so I think that's it for this week guys and uh, yep, looks like we're good. I appreciate all the questions and I'll chat with you guys next week.